Oh, hey, folks, this is just Paul. Um, Ric Flair, for those of you that don't know, um, he was the uh, world wrestling, not, not, well, he was the WWF uh, wrestling champion, too, when he switched over, but he was the NWA champion, which is a different thing. And he decided to make one more match with a pacemaker, of all things, implanted into his chest. Um, he's, I guess, 74 or something, but he looks like he's about 90 here. But um, anyways, he actually went through with this and had his last match. And um, I don't know much about it. I didn't see it, but it's all over the Internet this morning. And uh, evidently he did have his last match. Uh, much against uh, much against the advice of the uh, doctors and everything else and um, a lot of people criticized him a lot of people are uh, for him for this but um, I will show you the last part of the match and um, you can see it for yourself and I have to tell you something this really gets me teary eyed because it was a big part of my life even when I was an adult, um, lowbrow people tend to, you know, it's like a root beer float. Everybody likes it, right? Or a Coke float. But um, Ric Flair was the champion for a long, long, long time. He only lost it to a few people. Um, and he was the real deal. Now, I didn't like him at all. When he was wrestling, he was, I didn't like him. He was brash, aggressive. Uh, he put you down, all that kind of stuff. But uh, he got the people to come and pay to the wrestling, to go see the wrestling. And uh, boy, was he something. And uh, like I told you, I didn't like the man. I hated everything about him. But now that I'm older, I you know, I understand what he was doing. He was egging people on to go and see them in those matches. And uh, it's just the end of an era. Um, of uh, Ric Flair, and he was really something. He really was. Um, like I told you, I, I never cared for the man. I'll show you the ending part of the match here. And um, uh, this was his last match with a pacemaker, of all things. And uh, on Blood Thinners, he almost died a couple of times. I, I thought he was going to die about three years ago. And I saw him going bowling and roller skating with his uh, young wife. Uh, like two, three years ago, but I think he just kind of had this in his whole intertwined in his personality. So let me see if I can uh, take you to this. Okay, yeah, here. And he was like this. This is how he was. He would come out in those coats, Nature Boy. And this was evidently last night, I guess, or the night before, whatever it is. So that was it right there. They probably thought he was dead. I, I just, uh, you know, I was for this because uh, Flair put everything in that he had. It's called the figure four leg lock. I don't know how he got out of this. Wrestling town in the 
one of the greatest. I hate to say greatest because then everybody gets upset, but I had one of my best matches of my career here with Ricky Steamboat. All my family's here. We've made jokes about me being married five times. But all the kids are here. One wife, but all my granddaughters and seven are here and, and my friends are here. And, and I swear to God, guys, if I didn't have enough pressure on me tonight, fucking Kid Rock walked in the fucking locker room and said, he said to me, well, we can't tell what he said to him, but um, I think there's a lesson here, and um, Ric Flair certainly is uh, putting it forth, and that is when everything is against you, <clears throat> he came out and he performed. Uh, evidently, he trained, and um, this is with a pacemaker, and with uh, he's on the uh, coumadin or something uh it's on a blood thinner uh probably very poor circulation unbelievable just truly unbelievable i it was so intense what he was doing in his career um you know whether or not you like rick flair um he, uh, he certainly did it his way. Anyways, we'll call her up there. Take care, folks, and I hope you enjoyed Ric Flair's last match. Bye.